Can Thanks I for joining us again for Free Play's online festival. Uh, I'm Dan Golding, Free Play Director, and I'm just here to introduce this amazing online panel. Uh, first of all, thanks to our online festival sponsors, Surprise Attack, um, and a bit of info about Free Play and what we're doing uh, at the moment. We're running all week here in Melbourne, Australia, and we've still got tickets left to our symposium on Sunday the 19th at ACME uh, available. So visit freeplay.net.au for more info if you're interested in that. So today, uh, this panel uh, is called Watch This Game, where our guests will be talking everything from Let's Plays to streaming. So joining us, we've got Emma Graham, uh, who's been creating online video content for the past six years, totaling nearly... Six years? years. Yeah, yep. I had a channel before. Um, I do gaming. You were like ten then! Yeah. <laughs> And her her content totals four million views across her various YouTube channels, which is ridiculous. Um, and so she uh, creates uh, video and, and content under the alias Emma Exigames, uh, and she also works full time as a PR ninja at Surprise Attack. Uh, we've also got Brennan Keogh, who's a video game critic and academic from Melbourne. He's a PhD candidate at RMIT University and writes for a variety of publications including Overland, Reverse Shot and Unwinnable. He's also the author of Killing is Harmless, a critical reading of Spec Ops The Line. And finally we have uh, Prescription Pixel. Jenny, I should have asked how you want me to introduce you. Jenny? Oh, they're all. I'm both right. of those. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so Jenny is a lover of games with an interest in mental health in the gaming community and she spent the last two years engaging with YouTube and live streaming communities to promote, promote independent gaming. So from here, uh, join the conversation at hashtag FreePlay15. I'm going to drop out of this and I'm going to hand it over to our amazing panelists. All right, enjoy. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Thank you. Yay. I was told I'm not allowed to... Oh, we should probably disclaim. Um, disco cam. What disco cam? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, we just want to let everybody know that it's disco cam and that we're having a disco. And uh, I hope that you enjoy it as much as we do. It's a critique yeah, of right. like, like, no scope Call of Duty videos. You know, but, like... Oh, yeah, of course. Or 20 yeah. no scope. Anyway. <laughs> it is. Right. <laughs> We've got a list of stuff that we want to talk about. We may or may not actually talk about it, and or we may get onto endless tangents, which is what I usually do when I talk on panels. Talk on That's panels okay. or do That's any okay. sort of public speaking. Um, so, what what is the the actual first thing that we have on our list? Is the rise of video creation and games, and why people actually watch them? Um, Brendan. Yeah. We're going to let you start, because otherwise we will talk constantly. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I guess I'll answer that. I'm going to turn this other screen off, or else I'm just going to keep looking over the over Twitter feed. Um, so I guess I'll answer that with, like, my own personal experience with it, is that, like, I have a weird experience with video content in that I watch very little of it, but I seem to be making it, um, which is a really strange position to be in. Um, so I, I guess, I didn't want to start this polemically right away, but I'm going to, I guess. So I guess the reason I don't watch video content that much is because I, like, A, I have to turn my music off, which is really annoying, and B, I can't read it at my own pace. So it's just kind of someone talking, and it's like, get on with it kind of thing. But I guess that said, what I find really exciting about video content, when I make it and when I know other people who watch it, like my younger brothers, um, it seems to capture that whole sense of... Um, you know, sitting around your friend's house playing games back when you were kids, except now people just seem to do that online and you get to hang out with somebody who's playing a game and that seems really cool. Um, and not everybody likes reading, so it seems good for that. So that's why I think I'm, people engage with it. I, I, I'm the same, actually. I don't watch... A hu I got into it because I was watching people, but... Mm. I, I don't watch a huge amount of kind of let's play. I watch a lot of live streaming, but but not so much let's play. I guess the interactivity of it appeals to me, but also there's mm. the, the kind of like, the, the same thing, it's like, it's your mates playing a game. The first one I actually ever watched, like how I found out what let's play was, was because um, I'm a massive fan of the Silent Hill franchise, and when Homecoming came out, 
um, I, I realised that the format of Silent Hill had changed and it was now too hard for me to actually play as someone who doesn't really play. Like, the, the, whole, the whole way that that game was made was ridiculous because it was all, like, over-the-shoulder cameras as though you were supposed to be firing a weapon, but there was never any bullets, so, like, the majority of it was melee-style fighting anyway. So I couldn't do it. I was rubbish. So I, I googled um, or YouTubed uh, the name and then found someone let's playing and I was like what the hell is this and why is there someone talking over the top of it but um, he was uh, he's actually a really good friend of mine now but I, I thought it was hilarious and I ended up watching the whole thing and I just experienced the game through the let's play instead of actually playing it myself and I realised that that was a viable way of kind of entertaining people in terms of like if you can't really be bothered to play the game <laughs> or it's not accessible to you so like that was one of the things that I tried to do with my channel was a lot of indie games people just can't find, they don't know that they exist, yeah. they're not mainstream so you're introducing new games to people and being like hey this is cool and this is why I enjoy it and you actually get to perform a narrative on it which was what I got the most pleasure out of doing it from. Awesome. Yeah, personally. Okay, yeah, I'm similar to both of you guys in terms of Let's Play content. Like, I was never really into watching video games being played just because I love playing games so much myself that I kind of avoided watching them because of the, the spoilers. It depends on the type of game. Yeah. Um, so I ended up watching a lot more people playing multiplayer um, and stuff of people much, much better than me just because I couldn't do that. But watching someone do it was... Yeah, really entertaining. I was going to say, like, the first time I think that Let's Playing and, like, YouTube blew up in terms of games content was when I think Call of Duty is probably the biggest franchise I can think of at the start of that um, jump in and do that. Um, like, I think it was Call of Duty Modern Warfare um, was probably the start of that, like, real people. When was that? What year was that? 2000. And is it seven or nine? Two thousand and one of those. I want to say seven. Yeah, it's around then. I think is that was when... around the time that I discovered it as well. Yeah. So it was all kind of coming to a head at that point. I think. Yeah. It sort of so blew up. Um, in terms of internet accessibility. Um, in terms of you really don't need to have that expensive of a setup, and you didn't need to be hired by anyone to sort of get your opinions out there on something. Um, yeah, you yeah. can just buy a webcam and. Um, the like console recording things weren't that expensive to buy anymore, so get a webcam, um, editing software, and away you go. Um, mm. I think audiences enjoy it as well because it was just coming to the point where, um, like, obviously back in the day, if you wanted to watch something, it was on TV and if or at the cinema, and there was very little other options, and that was when YouTube was kind of exploding and people realised that they could find their entertainment somewhere else and if they wanted to watch something that was just about games they could do that all the time without having to bother with the crap that's on TV, TV yeah. Um, yeah. so that, that kind of those few years were really important for content creation yeah. the amount um, of YouTube my brothers watch they're like 14 years old and they just engage with YouTube in an entirely different way than I do um, I mean, they know so much about all these different games that essentially they can't afford to buy as, like, 14 yeah, years. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they know all this stuff about them because they can just sit on YouTube and watch somebody else play them. Mm -hmm. Well, and then there's the, the infinite games as well. Like, um, that was yeah. a really weird way of describing them. You know what I mean? Like, Minecraft and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, things that are... The, the possibilities are literally limitless. Mm -hmm. the, you can play it for 100 hours and you won't have achieved what the first person that you look up on YouTube will have achieved. So you can get your own enjoyment out of the game. And then then, then that's kind of also become a directionality point for developers as well because yeah. they've realised that they could latch onto that as a, a, a kind of sandbox uh -huh. style thing. Yeah. Um, saying that, that was always a thing, wasn't it? It was always a thing, but Since I think Civ. once yeah, people realised that people were really into watching someone else, how does this person react to The Sims versus how I react to The Sims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That thing, I think, really made like this industry sort of thing explode. Yeah, and I guess with those games, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of possibility for doing silly stuff and yeah. trapping people in pools and whatever <laughs> you want to do in this. You know, I've never played The Sims. Literally never. Really? Is that yeah? No, I know. Is that weird? 
just lost all your cred. Like, <laughs> no, I know. Oh, shit. Sorry. Oh. Um, uh, <laughs> oh. I that, think I played Duncan, Duncan Um, yeah. No, I'm I'm a fake fake gamer. I don't think so. <laughs> Sims, I didn't, haven't put many hours into The Sims, but I don't think The Sims is a... Uh, but you know what I mean. A landmark, yeah. People can do stupid stuff, share it with everybody, and then games are now being made specifically for that purpose. <laughs> and there's this kind of, like, cycle going where yeah. games are being made for the video content market and then the video content market is catering into these games. And then and it's just snowball. Perpetuating, yeah. I think I've covered about five points in that one tangent, to be fair. There's, um, there's probably also a parallel there with, like, the rise of, you know, kind of professionally spectated video games as well with eSports. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of become a big thing, at least in the West, in the last, like, five years or so. So, like, the idea of watching video games is, like a live performance has really come into its own alongside this stuff as well. And I'm not sure if it kind of is because of that or, you know, it's probably each kind of helped the other thing. But, um, but yeah, I think that's another aspect of it for sure. Yeah, and, and um, speed running. I mean, I don't yeah. know much about the, the world of speed running before Twitch. Twitch. Yeah. That was yeah. what introduced me to it. Was it really a, was it really a thing? Um. I, well, I think people definitely videotape themselves. I don't know if it was shared widely, probably like within communities, but I think it was less kind of public-facing than it is now, whereas now you've got things like Amazing Games Done Quick, which is just yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely awesome. probably like the only video content that I kind of committedly make sure I watch. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, just, not just because it's spectacular what they do, but you get this like really amazing kind of game history while you're watching it. Like I play some obscure game like, Tetris for Grandmaster, Free Devil Instinct, or whatever it was called, like some obscure Tetris game. And you've got these experts, like, telling you all the facts about this game, the weird, morbid ways it was de- designed that you never would get anywhere else, while you just watch somebody play for the whole game in, like, half an hour. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's been really that's phenomenal. That's really entertaining. I, I personally, like, that's one of the few things that I'll, I'll sit there and watch for hours on end and could be consistently entertained by it. Um, and it's it has allowed like there are professional speedrunners now like it's allowed oh, people yeah. to make a, a living yeah, yeah. out of like absolutely yeah you know exploiting a game for all of its glitches <laughs> um, and not just which speed is running, entertaining to watch yeah and also uh, not just speedrunning but like um, just exploiting games so there's um, a Spelunky streamer called um what's his name Bananasaurus Rex I think oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, um, and he does all those different amazing things in um, Splunky like the fastest game and the um, you know highest scoring game but then things like trying to figure out how to kill the ghost that no one knew you could kill and yeah doing yeah, all yeah. B-Rex things, is amazing uh, so and it's just he, like, um, he, was it B-Rex or was it who was it that did the first completed egg, eggplant run I think that was that B-Rex was, that was, yeah. yeah and that was like yeah, that know, was amazing and that's something that reading an essay about it without the video wouldn't have been the same experience. Like, you had that real kind of standing around the pinball machine, watching him get the high score kind of feeling, except online, which was really great. Absolutely. Did you see that video when someone broke the Spelunky speed record? I think he was a French guy or a German guy. Um, And he goes absolutely ape. (laughs) <laughs> I've not seen it. It's amazing. Well, because he he doesn't realise what he's done for a few seconds. Like he's like, oh, oh god, I, oh, and then he just loses it. <laughs> and it it's brilliant. <laughs> and uh, that that's the sort of rise of the new realm of entertainment in gaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, do we want to discuss why each of us sort of decided to make um, video content? Because I think all of us probably have slightly different stories. I know, Brendan, obviously yeah. you're a journalist first and foremost, so... Yeah, I think that'll be a good yeah. description. Should I go? All right. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yes, please. Go. So, um, so for me, I guess, like, so I'm primarily a writer. I do most of my... Anything about games is just writing words uh, for various websites or my own blog or more often than not Twitter. But, okay, I turned that monitor back on and now it's distracting me. Um, so f- for me, what, why I started making video content was mostly because I really... This is almost embarrassing to admit. I really like the Modern Warfare games, like the single-player campaigns, uh, which is like, as a game critic, you're not meant to admit that. Um, 
but like, I'm dethroning you <laughs> of your cool points. We are um, now both in the in the in the pit. We're right. in the di- we're in the mines of gaming cooldown. <laughs> yeah, but like I always had trouble explaining to people why I liked them. Like it was really because it's the stories are terrible, but like the way they told the story, I found really interesting. Um, so instead of trying to write an essay and trying to like talk about their themes or anything like that, which just aren't interesting. <laughs> I kind of like, all right, I'm going to get... I bought a capture card for the console since I don't play games on PC at all. Um, I just what? lost more. Um, so I thought, all right, I'm going to play through the games and just kind of like point out the things that I find interesting about these games, like the particular ways levels are designed or the particular kind of pacing of a certain stage. So by playing through it and talking about it, I could be, oh, yeah, look, that thing over there, that's what I find interesting about this. Um, so that's where it started for me was just wanting to do that. Um, so it was more of an analytical thing to begin with. It was it was kind of critically appraising what yeah. you were playing, but yeah. like, like was, a live appraisal. Yes, it was like another way to do analysis and criticism for me. Yeah, um, that's pretty really cool. Yeah, I still don't really do the kind of gut reaction kind of stuff, mostly because I don't think I'm very outgoing kind of person, so I don't think I would be very interesting to watch for that. Um, except after I got my capture card, I did start playing around with streaming just because I could, and I started to see the um, appeal to it. And now my PlayStation 4, I stream like Alien Isolation every now and then, and get totally freaked out in front of 50 people, which is pretty fun. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's how I got into it, and it's still a very kind of amateur thing for me. I don't have fancy headsets or microphones. I can just use my iPhone kind of earphones, and I don't do any editing. I just kind of load it up. So. Um, it's still a very amateur thing for me, I think. Uh, but yeah, what about you guys? You want to go first? What was the question? How you got into oh. making? Oh, I was content. lonely. Okay. <laughs> is that? Is that? Uh, that's a bit odd, isn't it? No, no, um, no that makes sense. That's sort of. Not at all. I was. I was living. This is a sad story. This is a story of woe. Prepare to be sad, everybody. So this was um, in 2013. Um, I, I was recently single and living on my own. I lived about half an hour drive from where I worked in the middle of the countryside in the UK. Obviously, I live in Australia now. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm, I, people, I don't know who's watching and who knows, but I'm a doctor. So the people that I work with had no interest in my passion, which has always been games. Um, and I was just, I was lonely and I wanted to, to hang out with like-minded people who also enjoyed video games and I thought, well, what better way to become part of a community than doing something I enjoy. I always enjoyed the concept of being a Let's Player and I kind of played around with it. And um, promoting indie games, which was something that I'd recently discovered and was really passionate about and because it was so much more creative and... Um, like the, the art form and the, the way that it was communicating a message I, it really appealed to me and I thought, yeah, I'm going to tell people about this, meet other people that also really enjoy it and, and make some friends for life and look what I did! <laughs> look what yeah. I did! Exactly, exactly. Um, I think for my story it sort of does, um, it's sort of similar to yours in terms of when I... Well, there's a couple of intersections into this. So I used to, before I used to make gaming content, I used to make animations um, on YouTube. And then when I got into university, I realized that that took a lot more time. Um, at the same time, I was getting really into video games, um, really into reading, like, critiquing essays, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, all the time. That was all I talked about was video games. But at the same time, no one I knew from my friends group or anything liked video games, so I sort of reached out um, to that community and being like, well, no one around me will listen to me, but someone will on the internet. So that's sort of how I started. I didn't start doing, like, Let's Plays or anything. I started making, like, reviews and this is what I thought of this announcement, etc., etc. Um, I only started making Let's Plays more recently and streaming more recently, um, just as another avenue to make content, but I'm still more inclined to like make more um, analytical stuff. Um, but from a standpoint of as Brendan would write it, I would instead write sort of a script about it and then say my feelings on camera about a certain aspect of a game rather than actually writing it. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious. Um, 
why why would you do that? Like, if you've already written a script, why go to the extra effort to make a video when you could say put it on a blog or something? What, what because do you think? Because I found, in terms of discoverability and stuff, um, I was into more. I think it's easier right now to, if you wanted to get into the industry in terms of that, it's a lot easier to jump in on YouTube. You can have immediate feedback and all that. And as well, I didn't really like writing. Um, I yep. didn't really like English in school or anything, and I was already making video content before that. I love making videos, so that sort of It's more communal. Like, video content is like... Like, it, it, there's more of a, a community aspect to it. Mm -hmm, definitely. So, so, like, you collaborate with people, you play games together, um, you know, you, you get instant conversation, and, and whereas with, with written content, I guess you're trusting that the people who are paying attention to it have got a bigger attention span. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so they're going to have to read all the way through to the end and, and construct something productive, whereas on, on <laughs> YouTube it's a lot easier to go, yeah, that was ace or whatever. Yeah. And, and it's a lot easier to network with people. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also found in terms of how I was consuming content at the time... Um, <laughs> I was like that. I was consuming the consuming content. Consuming content. <laughs> that's, how, that's my talk. Um, tasty content. From when I was maybe like 15 or something, a lot of journalism, games journalism was predominantly written, but by the time I got a bit older, everything was starting to more turn video. Um, so I'd go to someone's review, and if there was a video review, I would watch the video review instead of reading, just as a time thing. Um, so as someone who continually chose more to watch video content, that was more the path which I thought um, was something that I wanted to pursue. Cool. Yeah. <sighs> I think that's knocking off the video content versus reading content. Yeah, we're going to do the next point. I think it's really yeah. important that we have the next point um, about your habits. <laughs> no. <laughs> I edited the um, the Google document before we started, and Emma doesn't approve of my my annotations. Um, Very distracting. Quite offensive. Do you want to talk about indie games? See, uh, yeah, I really like them. What about all these ones? <laughs> <laughs> what? All these things you wrote? Oh uh, yeah, no, I did write some good stuff. Um, no, I'd like to talk about indie games. I'm I'm a very I'm a very big promoter of the symbiotic relationship that independent gaming has with video content and the fact that um, people who are um, less known have therefore got less access to um, mainstream stuff like AAA games or you know if you're doing review copies and you're you're doing a lot of reviews. Um, it's going to be very expensive if you're not getting games sent to you. Uh, mm. Whereas indie games are obviously a lot more manageable in terms of price, and independent developers are a lot nicer in terms of, or a lot more generous, I should say, in terms of delivering copies because they know that that publicity is going to be very valuable to them. And then it, it works the other way as well. So um, for the developer who can't necessarily get noticed by the big game journalists, um, they know that they can produce, they can get advertisement from video content creators. Um, so it kind of unlocks like a completely different world of entertainment because you've got people who are like, you know, I've played The Last of Us, I've played Left 4 Dead, I've played Name another one. Skyrim. I don't know. <laughs> Destiny. Look at the wall. There's, there's some on the wall. Um, I, 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 as you can tell, I don't play AAA games that often. The only one I play at the moment is Animal Crossing. Um, uh, but like, there, you know, the, the, there'll be people who are like, I've literally never heard of that game before. It sounds great. It looks cool from the thumbnail. Let's check it out. Um, yep. And it opens people's kind of avenues, particularly if you're a, a channel that has a mixed content like you, where you, you do some AAA and some indie, yeah. um, and you know other mainstream YouTubers. Um, yep. I don't know if you guys have got any thoughts about. I'm obviously very passionate about it. I think, um, as you did mention, that yeah, YouTube content creators was a way that, as you said, that 
indie people having trouble getting on IGN, GameSpot, etc., etc., etc. But they did have that avenue, and you saw some games that were probably not covered on there um, blow up just because they Yay. were covered by X, Y, Z um, YouTuber. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, it's 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 done a lot for a lot of de- like. I, I'd say that a lot of um, I did a panel about this at PAX, but a, a lot of developers owe a lot of their success to video content creators. Yet it's still kind of viewed as like a a lesser see yeah, form of journalism. I, like I want yeah, that's something I'm really passionate that like topic because I don't know why I I it does get looked down on. It it is still in this industry. I don't think it should be looked down on anymore. Um, but it still is looked down on by a lot of. Every, like everyone is like, oh, they're just a YouTuber, like blah blah blah. They don't put in time. I think it is because it's easier. But yeah, because yeah. like I jumped in by myself. Um, I didn't go and get approved writing degree and then get hired by X website because I had this credentials and I, I um am this mature, etc. Um, I just did it myself, and so did all of those content creators. And I think that's why it's looked down on. Um, I think in the next even three years, I think it's going to be a lot more um, level playing field in terms of yeah, value absolutely. of each, especially because, as you mentioned, Brendan, with was it your brothers that watch um, yep. content all the time, especially with yep. that it's sort cute, of yeah. leading up. Like I can't, as I said, I can't imagine my twelve-year-old cousin sitting down and jumping on these websites that do game stuff anymore, but he will watch YouTube. Um, till he dies, pretty much. Yeah. So I do think that as the industry grows a bit older, that that is going to be very, very, very well respected. Yeah. Did you already see it happening with like, um, you know, all the big websites now do so much more video content than they used to. Oh, yeah. And things like you know, Bloodborne came out, and suddenly someone at Kotaku was streaming it. I think Patrick Klepek was streaming it. No, Mark was, it Mark was streaming it like on. Well, I think, yeah, I think like, Mark was streaming it as for yep. at, um, Talk show. Like every every website has somebody streaming it, um, and I, but I think it's probably this weird kind of uh, uh, anxiety there, I guess, where um, you know you look at the numbers and you know that YouTubers get all more hits than a lot of games journals and websites get readers and all that kind of stuff. I don't know actual numbers, but you know they're, they're getting pretty close. I think, and all that. I think that's uh, true. Yeah. Um, so there's probably like an anxiety there, I guess, with like journalists who probably talk down or look down at YouTube, kind of seeing, you know, yeah, they're losing their audiences to these up these upstarts on YouTube or whatever. I think uh, it's more as well. They feel sort of threatened yeah. um, in terms of yeah, all these new people are coming in and they don't have ten years experience writing for yeah. something magazine. But you've still got to have yeah. something special to be noticed. Oh yeah, definitely. The same for the games journal, like written yeah. journalism industry. There, there's so many. It's so accessible. So there's so many YouTubers that yeah. you know, I, I I was once asked um, by uh, I won't say who it was, but by a prominent developer who was deciding whether or not to talk to me or not. Went so. How many subs do you have? Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, well, well yeah, I probably from... don't really want to. <laughs> yeah. Well, from That's developers, from the point of view of developers and publishers, yeah. YouTubers and games journalists are both just microphones. Like, they serve the same purpose. So you're just going to go with. Oh yeah, exactly. Cynically, whatever microphone is louder, I guess. But um, I was wondering though. I guess the, at the same time as like. I absolutely agree that YouTube is going to get looked down on by the games journalism industry unfairly. You also have this strange kind of, there's, um, I can't believe I'm going to bring up journalistic ethics. Sorry, Dan. Um, but, like, that you've got some kind of, like, you know, there's kind of ethical kind of standards that journalists are held to that YouTubers, while most YouTubers will probably hold themselves to it, absolutely. They're not kind of forced to them, I guess. Where, like, I guess the example I'm thinking of is a while back, you know, when a certain hashtag kind of started up, there was a whole lot of stuff about game journalists being, um, you know, paid to cover certain games yeah. and all those kind of conspiracies. I, I don't know what you're and talking about. It, it, did, it, mean, didn't, it, never, it never reached me. <laughs> I, I, it, well, must have, I must have, it must have been a small movement because I just, yeah, some, I just, I can't different. even understand what you're alluding to. Yeah, some of the thing. Anyway, whoever these people were, hypothetically, or five of them, um, you know, the... the <laughs> 
but the ringleaders were kind of like, you know, these big YouTubers who directly get paid by publishers to pay certain games, kind of sending these people to these journalists who might have gotten paid to cover reviews. And there's this strange, like, I don't know what I'm getting at. There's this strange almost kind of, these people are very critical of the journalists, these kind of masses, but not so critical of the YouTubers. And there's yeah, this almost, yeah. um, I think if they didn't see them as journalists, they weren't holding them to the same, I don't know, yeah. standard or something. I do definitely understand that in terms of, and a lot of YouTubers, they're like, I am not a journalist. Like, yeah. that's just it. That's how they see themselves. Um, which is fine if that's you know, how you want to think of it. I think it is just because it is such a new industry, there's not like certain standards that people do need to um, hold up to against. Um, I'm sure in a couple of years, again, um, there'll be some sort of standard which is formed, um, whether it's disclosure of like someone, someone paid me to do this or whatever um, as a requirement or whatnot. Um, we will see, but for now, sort of free run. Um, yeah. As you said, because there is still no standard for YouTuber in their bedroom, um, they're not going to. Yeah, they're not held to journalistic ethics um, the same way that obviously yeah. journalists are. It's a very not, hazy subject because yeah. psychologically, because the lines are blurred. I'm going to introduce kind of medical concepts no, no, into no, this. That's, that's, that's very good. That's what I do. Um, but but people people like to categorize themselves. That they do it subconsciously, but they like to categorize themselves into one thing, like a box. Yeah. You know, I'm either good or bad. To just put it very plainly in black and white. But when when the lines are very hazy and there's not direct rules, and obviously there's no legal standing in this whatsoever. And the same thing comes with Patreon and and things like that. People like to categorize themselves into whatever they consider the the good one, and because that's their their rule system, they'll just apply it to everybody else as a blanket. Um, and what what happens there is you get a, you get a lot of people who are ne not necessarily like malicious, but they've invented their own rule system because there wasn't one made for them, and then they feel very strongly that they should uphold that. And you get a lot of people that are you know and quite indignant or or even could be perceived as self righteous, but from their point of view, they're standing for something that they believe to be the right thing and then you end up in the situation that we've ended up with where you have like an all-out battle because yeah. there's a bunch of people who have invented a rule system that doesn't really exist who think that they're fighting for the right thing but no one can really see the bigger picture is that we're all in the same playground <laughs> and we've just drawn lines on the floor with chalk you know so uh, the, the difficult thing is 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 the the creation of the rule system for that is going to be well, whose system of ethics do we actually lean on, and hmm. how do we come about you know getting somewhere with that? It's going to be it's going to be interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I should also I caveat. Guess. Sorry, oh sorry, I was going to caveat my earlier rant in that it's not like yeah. games journalists either have a perfect track record with journalistic ethics either. Like you know, so. Oh, it's no, like no journalist ever from... anywhere in the world has a record of anything. Like the, every every industry that there ever was is corrupt. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't <laughs> understand why we're 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 so full of anyway. anyway. Yeah, so it's yeah. a little bit throwing stones from glass houses, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Judging myself, I don't like, understand yeah. that that phrase. Me neither. So it's about are you you're in a greenhouse, right? Well, I guess you're throwing a stone <laughs> no, so, at someone. And you're smashing your own house, which is transparent. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, but who? What house? So if you're in Minecraft, analogy. you build a house out of glass. And I don't now know. I understand what glass is. <laughs> is is games the, the house? I was and saying games. I was saying it could be hypocritical for games journalists to complain about the dubious ethics of YouTubers because journalists yeah. sometimes also mess this up. But also, I guess in yeah. games journalism. I think there's a bunch of people in games journalism, self-included, who have zero actual professional experience or um, study, upbringing, going to university nurse. I'm really good at words tonight. Um, in journalism, like none of it. I haven't studied journalism. A bunch of the best games journalists I know did, were just bloggers who um, ended up in games journalism. So really, it's about it's kind of the same thing. You just have 
amateurs amateurs have just kind of become their own thing and just have to figure it out themselves. So mm -hmm. uh, there's an interesting parallel there. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, Fascinating. Do we want to move on to... I'm going to throw stones at you. Please don't. You're my house. <laughs> um, do we want to talk about um, the rise of the personality in games entertainment? Oh, yeah, well, I put that in. Yeah. I, I think that's a good thing. Oh, no, I put, the, I put the YouTube celebrity. Oh, you wrote I that. Put, I put it in speech marks. Okay. This is why I should never lead anything. Um, yeah, I think this is yeah. also a sort of... When I was really getting into games media and everything, um, the person that stands out to me the most was Greg Miller um, from IGN. <laughs> Uh, there was a bunch of IGN people that now left and created their own um, independent uh, thingy that is on Twitch and YouTube now. Oh, um, cool. But, yeah, so that sort of, that was the draw of me going to their website versus somewhere else because the, he built a personality through that, and I think um, it is harder to build a personality through written journalism than oh, it is absolutely. through video. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think that whole ride, yeah. It's the whole character of human interaction, you know. You've got uh, intonation, facial expression, character. You, you can put some of your personality into a written piece, but at the end of the day, you have to be exceptionally talented to express the full range of opportunity of interaction that you have. Yeah. Like, I, the, how much of communication is nonverbal? Some, like, some yeah. student, like 70% or something, I don't know. They've picked this yeah. arbitrary value out of the air and decided that that's how much of communication is a verbal but you know you, you instantly have access to that you instantly have access to a personality and um, the the average length of a view for um, a YouTube video is, is four minutes if you're if the person is subscribed and it's something like 30 seconds if they're not yeah people very quickly know whether they want to carry on watching whereas yeah. With a review, you pretty much have to read the whole thing before you realise that whether you like that person or not, and the yeah. way that they write and the way that they communicate. Yeah. Um, so it's you know the lazy generation. It's also yeah as well the thing that um, what was I going to say? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, babe. Um, I'm not telepathic. <laughs> I'm working on it. No, nope, I had a mind blank for a second. Um, <laughs> telepathic Gen coming 2016 yeah, to yeah. an Emma near you. Do you want me to cover while you try to remember? Yep, yep, cover, please. What was I going to say? Um, we'll talk oh, about this right. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. So in writing, you mostly just have the byline, obviously. Or if you yep. wrote for Edge magazine before the last few years, you don't even have a byline. Like, I've got pieces of writing in print that don't even have my name on them. Um, but, yeah, but, uh, you know, I think that's probably changed a little bit now in writing thanks to social media and you have a whole bunch of, yeah. Yeah. you know, writers who... You, you know, it's mainly up to them to plug their own piece. So, like, you know, if Lee Alexander has a piece on Gama Sutra, you're going to... Most people... I don't, maybe not most people, but I would find it via Lee tweeting about it more so yeah. than... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going yeah. On so, um, so that's probably changed a little bit. But still, like, yeah, it's nothing compared to loading a YouTube video and being, like, and recognising somebody's face instantly. But, um, yeah. That's true, and in, in the way that YouTube's laid out now... Um, it does make it easier to access your, you know, subscriptions and the, the, the personalities that you particularly are, are yeah. interested in. So, you know, you load up your front page and you can instantly see their face. Yeah. Whereas, um, you know, if you're if you're into gaming journalism and the, the written format, you have to kind of physically search for someone. And it does, it does, it's, it, again, yeah. the lazy generation. Oh, there's a face click done. Yep. Happy That's, now. Yeah. What do you reckon the implications of that are for people's um, well-being in the streets and, you know, people as a... Oh, not well-being, that's a bad word. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, if you go to a convention and you're known, you'll get mobbed. Like, I... I, I obviously, I don't get mobbed, but I have pe I've had people that yeah, I don't know. I've had people approach me too. Coming up and going, Oh, yeah, you did it to me! Oh yeah, no, I did it to you. Yes, <laughs> that was different true. though. But, but like we were at a we were at a games yeah that's fair YouTube event. But people um, that you've literally not met coming up and like I guess like as a female and I'm and I'm not to know this but I'm only five foot two. Um, it is reasonably intimidating when someone comes up to you and knows who you are and then you're like oh I did kind of ask for this. 
Yeah, it's, <laughs> people do recognize, you do get the recognition. I've been re- recognizing my local pizza shop when I was just like, oh, I feel gross, I'm going to go get pizza. And then like, oh, I know you from yeah. YouTube. Um, but yeah, that recognition thing was that. What I was going to say before um, about personality. Oh, yeah, go on. <laughs> um, I remembered it now. Was, I think, to do with written... <laughs> What? I, I was just congratulating you on a job well I done. It. Okay, I think to do we used good. your frontal lobe, but it was so impressive. <laughs> With written journalism, um, I would predominantly be going to read someone's stuff um, because I'm interested in that specific game. Like yeah. I'm like, okay, I really yeah, want to know yeah. what Bloodborne, what people thought of Bloodborne, so I'm going to click on 10, um, you know, vid- not video, um, written reviews and read what people actually thought of it. But in terms of the personality thing, um, some people will go on YouTube and literally watch someone on MS Paint. Um, yeah. Like one of my favorite YouTube personalities is um, a guy who he does a, a series called Kickstarter Crap. Okay. Um, and he literally just like his most of his stuff is um, like gaming videos. Uh, but this series is my favorite thing. He just goes on to Kickstarter campaigns and just tears them apart. And just criticizes all the things that are stupid about them, and like right. the, the thing about that is that I don't really care what the Kickstarter is about. Yeah, a lot of the time you don't really care what the game is. Yeah, you just want to see this person play mm-hmm. them. And yeah, the, yeah. There's been a big thing about horror games and personalities, isn't there? Well, that's just funny because you can see people scream. But in terms of like, yeah, I would want to see my favorite YouTuber. I want to see them play Bloodborne. But not really because I want to play Bloodborne, even though I am playing lots of Bloodborne. Um, but because I'm sure that's not going to crash into us. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm under a, a, a flight path. Wow. Um, not because I wanted to see them play Bloodborne, but because I want to see my favorite YouTuber yell um, yeah, and yeah. laugh at them and be like, "Well, that was that's what happened to me too. I hit someone and then someone came up from behind and killed me, and I can relate to that." Um, but it's yeah. because of that certain person that I wanted to watch versus the yeah, fact absolutely. that I wanted to know about the game. Um, yeah. I really I think that's... Oh, sorry, what were you going to say? Uh, no, no, gonna, you go. I was going to say I have a... Um, what's the word? Uni, like, for someone who is also studying it where you're studying. Colleague? Yeah, colleague. I have a colleague at um, RMIT. Zia. She's writing a PhD about... Um, horror let's players and just about, you know, Ooh. you know, the reason you watch like She's writing a PhD about horror let's players. Like, yeah. Just, like well that's I'm, amazing. Um, yeah. No, that's I wanted awesome. to do a PhD about horror that's let's players. Awesome. Um but mostly about, you know, that the reason exactly what you just said, you know, the reason you watch it is less to watch Bloodborne or watch Amnesia is to watch the person's reaction to it or to watch what was that guy's name who did a really popular Amnesia one? Day nine or something? Is that a person? A, a streamer, D9. There's so many of them that I can't pinpoint all of them, but yeah. I, I think um, he's, anyway, he did a really popular Amnesia one, which my so housemate at the time watched, and like, you know, it was all about him emoting at it. Um, yeah. Which, um, um, which is interesting. You're watching the watcher. You're watching the people who are playing more than the game, which is really interesting. A lot of the time. Which I think is also the same, and that comes out a lot with Twitch and its interactivity um, yeah. in terms of the comment section. I know when I go on Twitch, um, I'm playing the game at the same time, but I check the comment, um, yeah, 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 the chat yeah. every two seconds, and reply to people and have like a conversation yeah, with them. Yeah, you can that. pop it out so that it's actually yeah, yeah. You have the game yeah. pop play, out and, and you can have the, the chat like that. That was that that was kind of what. Um, drew me into doing it a lot when I started hanging out with, you know, the whole Northern Lion crowd. Yeah. Um, mm. And we we used to stream all the time, um, and it was a regular thing. And it's timetable, it's scheduled. People know when you're going to be on. Yeah. So the same people come back every time. And um, I did a few I did a few series where I'd like play different indie games every day. And um, around my birthday last year, what was that going for that I played? Um, among no. Silence, Silence of the Sleep. It was the worst horror game of all time um, because it was I hilarious. Bad thing. All right, bad thing. <laughs> eh? I, I was just wondering, is like the worst horror game of all time? I was wondering if that was an insult or a compliment. No, no, no. It, it was a com. 
it was supposed to be a horror game, but it was hilarious. <laughs> so it was actually really good because it was so bad that it was funny. So I played through the whole thing and loved every second of it. But you end up with a community that's followed you through this journey and that everyone's making like their own memes. Like the whole the whole Twitch plays Pokemon thing. Yeah. yeah. Like that was yeah. there was a, there was a whole subreddit to it. It was like yeah. like if you say praise Helix to people, they'll be like, Yeah, yeah, we speak the same language. <laughs> so it's like a kind of like nerd cult for <laughs> for people that don't watch TV anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've gone a bit off track. What was the question? I think no, we're talking though about that community um, in there with Games yeah. Entertainment, which I think written journalism again, it's obviously a lot harder to build yeah, that absolutely. community of people coming back again and again to see yeah, you yeah, yeah. because it's words. No, it's yeah. you. and you're not always on the same. Like the, the vast majority of games journalists don't actually have jobs as games journalists, they're freelancing, and they're on like 50 mm. different websites, so it's even harder yeah. to find all of their stuff in one place. Um, yeah. But um, can I go back to the Twitch segue? Can I talk about yes. Twitch? No. Yes. No. Um, Lots oh, of Twitch. Okay. Stop talking, um, Brendan. We don't condone this behaviour. <laughs> Why did you think you'd be able to talk on an open panel about videos? <laughs> Just straight up misandry. Um, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> so on Twitch, um, I found streaming really interesting since I don't stream. Really, well, I only ever do it casually and entirely as an amateur. Like, I don't think it's the only reason anyone watches me is because people actually follow me on Twitter. Like, I don't do it in any kind of professional way. Um, but like, I, I have this weird experience. I was playing the crew that like open world racing game yeah. and just kind of driving around with like five people watching me. Um, and then a friend of mine, um, Wild W Wild. Mm -hmm. Um, this guy who yeah. has become like an amazingly popular Minecraft and other game streamer. I think he's in Adelaide. Um, but sometimes, I guess he thinks it's funny, and it is kind of funny. He'll just like tell all his followers to come and watch my stream. So I'll go from like five people watching me to like a thousand people watching me, um, and it's just the weirdest, weirdest experience because like these people are like, you know, I'm just playing this game, and then suddenly there's always people being like, and I'm driving in first person, you know, like, show me what kind of car you're using, or they're, like, asking me questions about the game, or ask me, you know, when do I stream, and I'm like, when I want to, and, like, suddenly I've got this whole audience of, um, I guess, serious professional stream watchers who expect that they're watching a professional streamer who knows yeah. what they're doing, not just some guy who pressed the stream button on his PS4, <laughs> uh, and it's really weird, uh, I don't know, and I guess you go, you can go from that like nobody to, I guess a thousand viewers isn't celebrity, but from like somebody people expect stuff from, literally in five yeah. seconds, and it's it was really weird. It's just a strange experience. I had a similar experience actually when I was just starting out. Um, I was invited to a, a marathon live stream, um, and didn't really know what it was. I had never really interacted with Twitch at all. I, I kind of. I didn't have a, a Twitch username at that point, um, so I, I started hanging out on this um, this stream, and it, it got more and more popular. And there was like, I don't know, somewhere between like five and seven thousand people watching. Damn. Um, yeah, that was like the marathon, marathon. Stream, okay. Yeah. Um, and the guys thought it would be funny to be like, "Hey, everyone, just go subscribe to Prescription Pixel on YouTube." Yeah. Um, and I got 1,500 subscribers over the next couple of hours. So I, I kept refreshing my inbox, and it was just like pages and pages and pages and pages of people subscribing to me. Yeah. Um, and they don't know anything about you. They just know that you're part of this community. So you've been invited to this thing, so you clearly are like-minded with the people that they already watch. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you can kind of enter this community very quickly and make a and that that's you, you you made your name a similar way didn't you you kind of collaborate with a lot of people and I didn't as much collaborate it was more I was more into I need to be playing this in the right place for right yeah, time yeah yeah um there's a lot of um meta stuff to do with YouTube um in terms of like search engine and all that which you you need to learn um I think if you want to get that initial push um in terms of to make a YouTube video as well it's quite hard in terms of you also have to do your thumbnail, your tags, release at the right time, um, and all those have to come together to sort of bring viewers. There's a lot of things around it that people don't really 
don't really, really as well they see yeah. a lot of again people look down because oh yeah they pressed play and then they went but I will record a video and spend four or five hours editing yeah um, it takes a long time to make a video and then all the other stuff that goes into it as well like it's that I found it really that's why I stopped inevitably because, well, that's why I've slowed down yeah, because it's, it's just too time consuming yeah when you've got a proper job it's uh-huh. insanity like I just I just I felt like I was letting people down yeah, yeah. By, yeah. by not uploading as much as I said I would. Yeah. Um, and in the end, it, the pressure just got to me, and I stopped and decided to like, you know, to re reevaluate what I was doing, what I wanted out of it. So it's really important that if you're considering going into video content creation, that you have a a good idea of your own, your what capacity. you want out of it, yeah. your own capacity, your own limitations, and you don't punish yourself too much for not achieving what you want to achieve because it's actually a lot more time consuming than you think it'll be mm -hmm. um, and it's not for everybody and it's okay to go you know what I that was fun while it lasted but actually I'm gonna take a step back now because yeah. it become more um, more dedicated like all the time that I'm dedicating to it is more than I wanted to yeah, yeah. so yes yeah. no in. you run into the same what were you gonna say Brendan I was just going to say probably an interesting. That's probably an interesting place to segue into talking about something like sustainability or like how do you support? Well, does yeah. your well, you guys did your you does your video content did it? I guess su support you financially or was it just something you did in your spare time or? No, I've I've never advertised. Um, mine's yeah, always so been free to air, but but that's because I have a a proper full time. Not that other people's proper jobs aren't. You know what I mean, um, yeah. but I always <laughs> felt like my my point was to promote indie games, not to make money. Yeah. Um, so I've I've never made a penny off of online stuff. Yeah, that's or, right. Or a cent if. A cent. <laughs> um, I monetize my stuff. Um, it's not obviously it's would never be anywhere near the amount, um, to live off. Um, my yeah. other stuff will monetize. I said. My previous videos um, were a bit more successful in that. So when I came into gaming, I was just like, okay, well, you put ads on there anyway. But my goal was not to um, earn enough money to live. It was I would love to earn enough money so I can buy my next video game to play another game. Um, that was always my... Yeah, yeah. That wasn't the reason why I did it, but that was my financial aim for anything on YouTube was I would love to be able to pay for my next game with... Yeah. The money that I got from playing my last game. Yeah, cool. Yeah. That's kind of how what I started in journalism. I was like, if I get a review copy out of this, you know, that's like 80 bucks for the review essentially there, but I don't have to spend. Yeah. Um, that kind of started. Um, for me, like, I never expected to make lots of money out of it or even much money, but like, it's kind of like, as I guess a freelancer, I kind of have to justify spending my time doing it. So I started a Patreon page. Um, mm -hmm. but, but it was kind of like, I'm, it wasn't like, I'm only going to do it if I make so much money. It's just like, I'm going to do this anyway. Here is the teacher yeah. if you want to support me doing yeah. it. Um, and I've gotten a little bit of money from it. I think probably on average, probably closer to like $25, $30 a video or something, which is nice. It's really it's good like, though. Yeah. I, and I, I don't actually do any editing or anything. I just record it and, um, you know, make my computer stay on overnight when I'm not trying to do anything else on the internet and upload it to YouTube. Um, yeah, no, that's been my upload tactic mm -hmm. in Australia. Yeah. The overnight. Do we want to talk about um, segue from that um, yeah, into one. Australian internet? We totally got this. Yeah, which is something I think totally we should talk about is that the internet's terrible in Australia, so it's how do you guys deal with that? For I... With your disco I website. can't put it into... Just the amount of people as well. If you were to look up the content creators in Australia that do gaming stuff on YouTube versus Twitch, um, there is quite a lot of highly successful gaming people um, in Australia that do YouTube. Um, I mean, it's not obviously as big as a community as America, and most people aren't as big as people there. Um, but they're majority YouTube, and a lot of them tell me, look, I can't Twitch stream. Like, it's actually impossible. Um, I'm in a situation where I can Twitch stream at... 480p. Um, if I was, you know, pursuing that for and wanted to make that my job, I don't think I could because people at a certain point would be like, "Look, Emma's quality 
isn't that good and there's nothing physically unless I moved out of my house to a location. I know a guy that does gaming videos who moved to rural New South Wales because they had NBN and that was his job, yeah. um, was YouTube. So he moved there because it's it's the opposite of like I, relocating yeah. to a city. He relocated to somewhere where he could have yeah. proper internet and... Yeah. I can't watch Twitch. You can't watch Twitch. No. Yeah. That's probably it's true. That bad. Like, so many people in Australia. Like, I reckon my brothers um, live with my dad kind of like, well, not in a capital city, so like out of Brisbane. And yeah, like very, the internet's terrible. They can't live stream anything. And they can only watch YouTube if um, um, no one else is doing anything on the internet either. Yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah. As, as someone who spent the first 25 years of her life in a real first world country. Um, where the internet is actually terrible. Coming here was... It is painful. Well, the same. I lived in England. I went on uni exchange, and I remember oh, yeah, going did, there, yeah. and I record a video, and I usually have enough time to click upload here, and then I'll make my thumbnail and everything in that time. Clicked upload, and the video just went, zoom, online. Yeah. And I was like, stop, stop, what the hell happened? <laughs> like, did I put this... This Is this the wrong file? And then I looked it up, and... Mm -hmm. Their internet speed was seventy times faster than mine. Yeah, seventy. Wow. Yeah, that's standards. My my parent my parents live in London and they were hundred up, hundred down. It's, oh, yeah. it's I'm currently living in a house um which has VNBN. I only moved here like a month ago and I have to move out and soon, but VNBN makes me want to stay here. But yeah, like I used to try streaming from my old place and it'll just be blurry and pixely and very unreliable. But a few times I've streamed here from my PS4, it's just it's just fine. It's like, and it just means I can just kind of record it, archive it to YouTube, and it's like you don't yeah, have to do any kind of processing yeah. stuff. As well, uh, the PS4 thing. So I couldn't. I actually can't from here live stream like directly from my PS4. I had to get uh like a recording capture card and everything because I can change the exact settings on here and like put in these codexes and all that to lower right. my quality enough that it's watchable. Um, yeah. But at the same time, it like it's just annoying, and it adds that little barrier to entry. Like, yeah, again, people yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. The PS4 thing was awesome for Twitch in terms of bringing more people to that platform. The PS4 and Xbox like integrated again. That's another thing which people can um, jump onto that bandwagon because they didn't need to buy the capture stuff. But here, you still, if you don't have NBN, you have to buy the capture stuff because yeah. um, you can't do it from their inbuilt software. Yeah, totally. What's the hashtag again? FreePlay15. What is it? The hashtag, FreePlay15. Don't just search yeah. FreePlay. It's like going to open up for questions. Um, we've got a few in the comment thread. Uh, uh, yeah, but we're going to get more. A screenshot but, Let's Play is dead forever. What does that mean? What's a screenshot well, Let's Play? I guess that's when you play for a game and take screenshots of it and you kind of like, you know, write up like a diary entry kind of thing with like all your screenshots. Oh, okay. As I think like, so not a video. Yeah, um, just like... I think they all did forever because I didn't know what the hell it was. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, in terms of the things like, I don't... Oh, maybe screenshot Let's Plays are dead forever. I was thought, thinking about like walkthroughs with pictures. Um, yeah, I yeah. Don't think they're, they're relevant just because... I don't want to, if I'm stuck in an area, I don't want to watch a 20-minute YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Then I go to written stuff. Yeah, I hate um, watching videos if I'm stuck. Yeah, always... I'm like, no, nah, words or nothing. That's where I will go to words. Um, Rock, Paper, Shotgun do some been... really good ones. <laughs> Rock, Paper, Shotgun do some interesting ones, like, which kind of relates to another question about sitting there about new games journalism, which is like a form of game. Well, it was a manifesto that Kieran Gillen wrote like back in 2004 about how instead of, like, normal games journalism, people should try writing... No, I can't uh, read it. <laughs> essentially, right. essentially, tour guides to places that don't exist. Um, and I guess, yeah, Let's Play is about it kind of good for us, like, here's just this place, and that really kind of first-person subjective thing. Okay, I just tried I, answering... I, tried answering I hadn't questions. heard of that before. It's, um, um, it's more of a writing thing. It, doesn't, it probably hasn't really impacted on YouTubers, but it's kind of an interesting point that who made that? Alex. Alex made that, I guess, at um, 
yeah, like you, um, let's play videos have kind of become just kind of the natural inevitable end of that. This kind of just here is the game. I'm playing it. You can see yep. it. That kind Bam. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there any other questions in the actual comment thread? Uh, Slash, should I look up the hashtag? I'm looking at it. Uh, who's asking questions? Mark Duval says, Animal Crossing, you say, but I don't think that's an actual question. Um, I didn't actually... Ben Abraham from... asked, why am I terrible? Because he is a terrible human being. Uh, no one's taking it seriously. <laughs> no. Everyone's like, um... Is there any other... Um, people say that Jan is really funny. Um... <laughs> Yeah, no, is there any other real topics we can sort of um, hit on? I can talk. Oh, yeah, also... I had a question, actually. I have a question. Yeah. What, um, what kind of capture card do you use? What would you recommend to people? I Who, use an Elgato, but if you want a disclosure, I didn't pay for it. I got it from <laughs> Elgato. Um, <laughs> I was totally going to um, I, I I needed to disclose it because we're having a this like sort of um, conversation. If you want to talk specifics, um, if you go for one which actually plugs into your computer, I think it's PCIe port versus a USB one. Um, you can get it so there's no delay. So because mine's a USB one, there's a delay from my PS4 um, to getting into my streaming software. Um, but yeah, all right, question from Wild. Are we too saturated? Sure. Have we shifted from what we call play? Um, I so think hey. yes, in a way. Um, I paid. <laughs> are we too saturated? Is the... Yeah, no, the, we're going blue. <laughs> I just saturation. Paid. are we too saturated? It's more so I, funny. So funny. I made a colour joke. <laughs> from YouTubers. Um, I think it's difficult. I think, yes, in terms of now, if we were talking about the barrier to entry um, for getting into written games journalism, I think that has sort of sprung up in um, video thing as well in terms of because these already people have an audience and whatnot um, and you're definitely favoured on like YouTube's search algorithm, if you have more views and consistently, if I type in um, the Last of Us review, um, I'm gonna get the bigger um, YouTubers before I hit to the lower and the lower and the lower. Um, so yes, it is saturated. It helps if companies have better discoverability in terms of YouTube and Twitch. Like Twitch, I think has a better system of finding people. Randomly, you want to watch? Do you think that's true? Are you listening? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking about YouTube. I don't know how you find people on Twitch. Twitch, in terms of I will be like, I want to watch. Like, I don't really follow as many people on Twitch as I should, but I'll be like, I want to watch. Bloodborne. I'm going to continue using Bloodborne because that's all I've been playing. Um, I want to watch Bloodborne, and then from there it has everyone's picture up, and I can scroll through and pick that. So even if you're not the biggest person, you have better discoverability for that actual game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are the best tools of getting into video creation? Let's wrap up after that. Okay. What what do you mean tools? I use Fraps or um, Bandicam for my capturing because it's all PC for me, and I use just a, a mid-range microphone and the same webcam you've got, um, and some cheap software, and that's that's it. Yeah. I use, I use uh, Sony Vegas yeah. Movie Studio. For yeah, my I use editing. Sony Vegas as well. Is my editing thing of choice since I was like fourteen. Um, I think. Best video creation, just to get started, um, any microphone, for years I used my camera inbuilt microphone or a I used a Guitar Hero microphone. Um, so any sort of headset microphone I think is sort of good enough to jump in. Yeah, um, yeah. Definitely test that out. Once you do 
um, sort of branch in. People expect more quality from you and whatnot, and that's when you need to sink some money in or find ways to get um, things. But webcam is fine. Um, and then PC, I, I use streaming from OBS, which is a free software. Um, yeah. and oh, yeah, I use XSplit. Same, same, same thing, but I yeah, also same, record different kettle of fish. if I'm recording um, a PC um, game, let's play, I record from there as well. Like I don't bother with fraps or anything because I can just change the setting and press record and it still works. Yeah, no, um, that's fair. Hmm. So there's, find, uh, there's a lot of free stuff. What about you? Um, well, I'm on a Mac. I don't have um, a PC, so streaming seems really complicated. I looked at a video, but it just seemed too much effort. But uh, for capturing... It's actually like you can just open QuickTime on a Mac and go to like File, New, Screen Capture and click Record and it just records your screen and that's really amazing. It's just like you just do it super easily, um, which I only found out recently so I'm going to use that for a whole bunch of like small indie games that I want to play but aren't on console. Um, a program I couldn't live without for my video stuff on Mac is Handbrake. It's like a free program and it just takes your like 4 gigabyte video and makes it a 500 meg video Using, nice. okay. using black magic, guys. So black like it's the mm -hmm. quality, quality stayed the same, and it just meant I wasn't spending two days uploading a video. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like um, handbrake, B I A K E, I think. Um, and then yeah, I just have an Elgato capture card as well for my consoles, which I had to pay for because I'm not cool. Um, <laughs> in terms of not physical tools, the best tools are collaboration and being on the ball with what's popular. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're the biggest thing. Collaboration is just that's that's it. That's what you. There's collaboration, and as well as knowing, I think as well your market, um, in terms of what your yeah, yeah. your viewers that are already there, what they're interested in, in continuing. So like my your audience, my channel yeah. is PlayStation. Like that's I do cover PC stuff very occasionally, but for the most part, if it's on PlayStation, I'll be playing always on PS4. So I just get all the people that like a hardcore PlayStation people come to my channel um, first and foremost. So knowing sort of what type of people that you want to come watch your videos um, I think is quite important. Just back to the technology stuff, um, how great that the PS4 and Xbox, I think the Xbox can do it as well, is for their recording tools. Like sometimes I'll be playing, I did something cool, press the save button and then stick my USB in and take that. Yeah. Um, that's the so... Really great. Important for accessibility. Constantly doing it. Just yeah, um, just at any point you can go. I want to record the last five minutes without having to press record first. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. And just as someone that doesn't want to, if you didn't want to put a hundred or two hundred dollars into, how much is like if you didn't want to put a couple of hundred dollars into a recording software, you can technically do everything. Again, I don't know about Xbox, but you can do pretty much everything from. Your PS4, you can record your voice while you're playing um, through it. And if you bought the PS4 camera, you can stream with face cam. You can have your comments up and everything just straight from the device. So accessibility. All right. I think that's... That's it. it? Dan's telling us to be quiet. Uh-huh. We need to shut up now. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, we, we, we're getting kicked off. I was, I was fantasizing about... Fine. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody, for watching. No. Yeah. No? Yeah, thank right. You. Yeah? Maybe? Does Dan want to come back and say goodbye? Yeah, I think Dan! so. Yeah. Dan! Yeah! Dan! Putting his glasses on. Oh, he's putting on the glasses. He's getting ready. No, I don't think anyone can see him except us. Yeah, um, now they can. Yeah. If he takes uh, off his microphone. I take off my microphone. Yeah, all right. I'm back to, to finish up the panel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to uh, Brendan, Emma, and uh, what did we decide your name was? Jenny. Oh, Prisca. Jenny. <laughs> That's okay, okay if you've forgotten my name. I don't mind. We've only met a couple of times. <laughs> um, Thank you so much. It's been a great panel. Uh, we'll finish up. And uh, remember to keep tuning in. We've got uh, three panels uh, tomorrow night. And we are going to continue on uh, with a whole bunch of more of this uh, live streaming panel stuff until Wednesday. And then we've got the in-person festival up until the following Sunday. So come along to us in Melbourne. Keep tuning in. And thanks, guys, for participating and for tuning in. See ya. Bye. Thank you. Bye.